In today's crazy world, we're constantly using things we don't need, doing things we don't like, and never really moving forward or getting the results we're hoping for in either ourselves or our animals. Are you ready for a change? Join me, Wendy Patrick, your host on Quantum Years, Finesium Health's podcast, and become empowered to take control of you and your animals' health and well-being. We're all quantumly connected, so whether you're around the corner or around the world, it doesn't matter, because we can help each other and all work together on our journeys. So come, join me and together we'll myth bust, share advice, knowledge, truths and suggestions to help you awaken, grow and continue your journey to a healthier, happier life. Hello, folks, and welcome to another episode of Quantumly Yours from Finesium Health. I am your host, Wendy Patrick, and hopefully I'm here to not just entertain you, but also to help you to get better ideas, um, understanding of better things that are going on with you or with your pets and how that you can become empowered to take more control over that and look after things yourself, trusting your gut and going on this journey to having healthier and happier pets and a nicer fun time with life but before i go any further i want to ask you all to please let people know about the podcast like subscribe share it amongst your friends your family um you can go to financiumhealth.com and on there you can subscribe to get an email every time we release another episode which is generally every thursday and you can also go on there if you have a wonderful story or great experience, or in fact, you're an expert in your field of a different natural health modality that can help both ourselves and our pets. And you can actually hit the button on the website and uh, contact us if you would like to be a guest on the podcast. We'd love to hear your questions as well. We'd love to hear your comments and feedbacks. And indeed, if you uh, love our guests as much as we do and you'd like to see them back again let us know too but on that point i have the wonderful heather lang back with me today um we have had her on the show before a few weeks ago and um we asked her back because we went into all sorts of different topics the last time but never really got into the one that i'd really wanted her to talk about uh, she has got a lot of knowledge on on a particular topic, which I will let her go into in just a little while. But for those who weren't on the last podcast, Heather is an osteopath. She is living in Scotland. I met her when she was living in Canada. I uh, was very lucky to have her as my osteopath then. She helped me immensely with my health and well-being. And uh, sorry, sorry, sorry that she's so many miles away. Um, just to give you a little bit more background on Heather, she is also an ergonomic consultant and with 26 years experience working across the UK and Canada. She's worked in clinical practice with therapists from a wide range of disciplines and philosophies and also conducts biomechanical research. So she has a good understanding of how the body works and what makes it sick. So welcome back to the show, Heather. Hello, Wendy. Thank you for having me back. Oh, you're very welcome. It's always a pleasure. Thanks for taking the time. Um, tell us a little bit more about osteopathy first, um, Heather, if you would, and then we'll go right in because I want to know what makes us sick these days. Um, for anyone that's not familiar with osteopathy, possibly the easiest way to imagine it is it's a combination of massage, chiropractic, physiotherapy, um, basically, it's understanding anatomy, physiology and psychology and then applying it. Uh, it's a manual therapy, so I do poke and prod people till they feel better. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I remember it well. <laughs> yeah. 
So mm-hmm. yeah, um, carry on. Let's jump right in, Heather. What uh, what do you see that's that's making us sick that you need to poke and prod so many people these days? <laughs> well, it's changing. It's it's amazing how quickly just in the, re- the, the last few years, um, what's making people sick is changing. Hmm. When well, here in Britain, the NHS and um, when our health service was set up in the 1940s, it uh, it its main job was to deal with infectious diseases. So that's for infectious diseases, generally the best thing is take some sort of antiparasitic or antibiotic or anti, you know, it's deal with the, the invader. Um, with the improvement of sanitation, it's not so much the infectious diseases anymore that's making people sick, it's more turning into lifestyle issues. Mm. Um, I would say, well, 16 years ago as an osteopath, I would say probably, oh, um, the the vast majority, oh yeah, it'd it'd be back pain. The reason, the main reason people took time off work was back pain or headaches, but predominantly back pain. And the actual numbers, percentages of the workforce um, taking time and days lost from back pain hasn't actually changed, but it's now superseded four times by stress. Wow. So um, when we think of stress, we all tend to think of anxiety, um, which is, is definitely a large factor, but we're also under constant environmental stress. So as well as the psychological stress, our bodies are also under environmental pollutants um, and stress from that. So Yeah, wow. Yeah, there's lots of things going on in there. So um, something that uh, I've worked with a little bit and we've chatted about it a little bit, and I think you can speak a lot on this because it affected you personally, if I remember, um let's go into emfs what they are and what are they doing to us basically um electromagnetic frequencies affect us because we are electrical beings every cell process in the body ultimately is an electrical system um If you were to take a plastic ruler, it was an experiment we used to do as children, and run a steady stream of water, a gentle steady stream of water, and rub a plastic ruler with a a cotton cloth, then when you hold it quite near, you can see how a tiny little bit of static can affect the big body of water. So we are effectively air-breathing fish, if you like, um, (laughs) to think of how our systems work. So we're a fluid system, a fluid electrical system. So electromagnetic frequencies to us is a bit like being a goldfish and somebody constantly shaking the bowl. Wow. So every time you add an extra layer of radio frequency, electromagnetic frequency, anything that's going to create a wave through the air is going to be like another ripple in our personal little goldfish bowl. Right. That's kind of, so what effects does that have on the body? Like, how do we know we're being shaken like goldfish in a bowl? Usually the symptoms will start sleeplessness, inability, lack of sleep is, mm-hmm. is definitely. Um, joint pain, you tend to get hair starts to come out, um, not necessarily in clumps, but if you run the fingers through your hair, you realise there'll always be four or five hairs stuck to it. Um, a burning sensation, when it starts to get bad, you get burning sensations in the forearms and down onto the legs, bleeding gums, tooth decay, um, digestive disorders, headaches, Basically, it it can attack you from every angle, which is one of the worst things because psychologically, it can prevent the brain from going into its three stages of um, of environmental processing. So, as well as the physiological stuff, um, one of the ways it can it flatlines the brain frequencies. 
So when a person gets uh, sees something, like for example, if you saw a bee, you would think, is this a bee going to be dangerous to me? Do I need to take immediate action? And if the answer to that is no, they go into the second phase. Is there any positive from this? And you think, well, it's a bee, it's summer, they're pollinating the plants, all is good. And you say, okay, what's the final outcome? The final outcome, seen a bee, didn't sting me, yay, life is good. When you are subjected to electromagnetic frequencies, it can flatline that process and get it stuck in the first phase. So you see, a seen a bee, it's going to kill me. Oh, so it's like permanently um, fight response almost, or it's flight response? The paranoia, because yes, the assumption that they're making, the first one is, is right, but it's not then letting them get a good evaluation. Basically, it flatlines the thought processes. So when you wake up in the morning and people ask you a question, do you want baked beans or do you want scrambled eggs? And you do, I don't know. It just gives you that permanent state. Wow, so it's almost zombifying. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I, I, our, our sounds a little bit wonky, so I, I lose you when I, I talk. I'm sorry, I lost that last bit. I'm just thinking it turns us all into zombies. But, uh, what were you saying on the other side there? Zombie brain fog. Oh, exactly what I. <laughs> oh, so we may be on a similar uh, frequency to be saying the same things. I'm just going back for a second though, Heather, uh, really interesting. Some of those symptoms that you were describing, which I'm seeing a lot of symptoms like that, which are basically being shown as other disease. And I mean, we know disease, if you break the word, it's just a state of not being in ease. Mm -hmm. Um, so things are basically throwing you into that state. If you're not healthy, you're actually in a diseased state, but everybody, I think puts an awful lot more weight on whenever they're being told it's a disease it just means that you're off kilter. Mm -hmm. So the energy that you even give to that word can make you go off, but I'm going off. But one of those things you'd mentioned was about the hair falling out, which is one of the most easiest symptoms that you can actually attribute to, um, thyroid issues. So are people being misdiagnosed, do you think? Absolutely. Um, because we can't see it. And people people don't want to give up the Wi-Fi. Right. I would have better chances sometimes of telling people to... Uh, people don't want to hear it. It's too convenient. People love their Fitbits. They love their smartwatches. They love their mobile phone. They love their computer. If you think of... The average house you've got your smart tv you've got your wi-fi you've got your computers you've got how many people with their own personal devices it's an awful lot of things in the air at each time and each one of these is like another stone being thrown in our little pond um, and creating more and more ripples but people don't want to hear it even when i kinesiology test them and i show them the difference between standing there um you know the the test to resist my arm see their muscle strength now give them the fitbit back and they lose all their muscle strength but they still won't believe that their neck pain or their joint pain is connected to the fitbit and even just their phones i, I muscle test them frequently with their phones um and it shows them right away that that's not good for you and, and you think you know of that sorry it's all right. No, I was just going to say, think of the amount of us that actually go to bed with our, our, our mobile phones sitting on the bedside table right beside our heads. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, it's, it's, I know individually each thing is tested and they say, oh, but they said that this phone's safe. They said Fitbit's safe. They said this. But it's like, okay, have you tested them all together? Mm. and most people it's the same as certain food products like gluten everybody's gluten sensitive to some degree but the extent to which depends on the individual everybody is going to be emf sensitive to some degree the extent to which depends on the individual and it depends on the toxic loading of it yep and exactly what i always say is every being is different because it also depends as well as to how much metals in your body even Absolutely. to the fact of implants. 
Um, I mean, not even implants, but outplants. I mean, ladies are more susceptible than men because of underwire bras. Metal is a conductor. And where do ladies usually wear conductors? On their ears and around their boobs. A friend of mine who teaches Jinshin Jitsu, um, another Japanese manual therapy, she is absolutely adamant that so much breast cancer is caused by underwire bras um, because of the metal preventing the flow of the electricity down to the kidneys. And that's and also then, then backing up the lymphatic system as well, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So now, what can we do? Um, basically, buy bras that aren't underwired. Just... <laughs> One of the best things that people can do is give themselves time away from it because the body does recover quite quickly. Um, one of the, another side effect of EMF is thrombocytopenia, which is a reduction in blood platelets. Um, giving the body a break away from it. So switching the Wi-Fi off at night, not using a Fitbit, sleeping, um, Sleeping in a room that doesn't have electrical equipment, if you can, um, if you've got a big hedge around the house, then foliage is great. Trees, any greenery really absorbs an awful lot of, of what's coming at you. Um, one of the things that I am becoming more and more convinced with for years, I've worn things like the, the Mojo, um, just EMF wristbands. Um, interestingly, uh, a couple of days ago, I got one for my mare, who's usually fine, but I'm just a bit concerned about the cell tower that's quite near her field. And the gelding, who's he's 19 now, he's been getting an ex racehorse. He's starting to look a bit creaky in the mornings. But two days ago, I put the, the Mojo Fetlock bands on him. And he was definitely more fluid yesterday. And today I've taken videos off and jumped about the field like a week old. Wow. Um, the difference, just, I have no idea how the modules work. I'm not going to pretend I know how, how these negative ion wristbands work, but they definitely do help with the symptoms of EMF. Yep. I, uh, I use um, a little vial with a lovely little substance that was created, and uh, it actually helps to absorb the, uh, the EMFs and, and will change it into positive energy in the system. So, the Mojo bands, I'm sure, work the same way. We might even get a plug-in for Mojo there and and put their uh, information in a, in our uh, listing underneath the, the video and certainly give our uh, viewers and um, listeners a little bit more info for something else to in research for themselves and their animals as well because anything is, is good. A lot of people actually go very well for the, the Shungdite um, um, mineral or rock or whatever and you can get them stuck. Oh, look, you've got one around your neck, Heather. Well done. Um, I've got silver, but I mean, I know that's still a conductor, so I'm a bit of an oxymoron. Um, but I do try to even keep my glasses to more of a plastic frame, even though there's metal inside that. It's not touching the body. But again, just things to be a wee bit more conscious of trying to do to reduce this. Um, but yeah, there are certain different things out there that you don't actually have to pay through the nose for to help to protect you either. Even going into the garden in your bare feet, grounding, um, you know, grounding, getting out, doing the garden, get your hands dirty. Uh, you can get grounding sheets to go in the bed. A lot of folk have said it's the best night sleep they've had in a long, long time. You can also get little heel straps. Um, it's one that it just fits underneath the sole of the shoe and then goes down into the sock. So right. it basically just bounds you out if you're walking. But um, in the absence of all of that, Swimming, if, if you're fortunate like we are to live near the ocean or live near the sea, getting out in the sea every once in a while um, and that negative ion exposure is, um, is ideal. Actually, as well, something else that somebody can do every single morning and you can do every single evening as well. And if you want to, half a dozen times during the day, but showering. Mm -hmm. um, even showering, the, the actual positive... Um, charge that comes from showering and that the water coming over will actually help to placate that a little bit that's sometimes why sometimes you'll just feel literally perked up when you have a shower 
um because i know with our little vials that um i used i used to have them strapped all over me which helped to reduce the pain because it reversed all the the bad effects but the one thing is you cannot use them into the shower or otherwise you have to actually recharge them again there are lots of different things with that but that's lots of different options what we would add to that is dry brushing getting something like a soft bath brush and brushing the skin before having a bath or a shower because that will really sim um, stimulate the lymphatic system and help clean everything out help clear everything wonderful um, but doing it before get get in the bath or the shower great tips no that, that's brilliant no i'm glad i mean i know um i wanted to talk to you about this but the fact that you've got a whole lot more solutions as well than I'd known about too is fantastic. And I think I will have to do a wee bit of delving and, and chatting with you after the fact to get some more names that we can add to uh, let everybody know that there's a couple of different options out there for yeah, sure. Sorry. Um, what I found out as well, wasabi, fresh fruit wasabi and coriander or clintro, as you would call it over there. Um, they remove maybe metals from the body, as well as the enzymes in pimto beans, baked pimto beans. So basically baked beans, coriander, wasabi for lunch. Wow. So there's there's easy ones. And if someone needs to delve a lot more and actually get some testing uh, and find out whether this is affecting you on a cellular level, then that's something that I can actually do and offer through Finesium Health too. So you can also book an appointment at finesiumhealth.com. Um, but that's that's just reiterating how important it is to get back to nature, isn't it, Heather? And get out there in the trees and the woods and uh, leave your phone at home, hey? Oh, completely, completely. I mean, one of the reasons that people are, are getting addicted to the mobile phones, partly the, the, the hypnotic aspect, because that proximity to your mobile phone does flatten the brain waves. Um, but... The opposite of addiction is not sobriety, it's connection. And people need to feel connected to something that is bigger than themselves. They need to be connected to nature. And in the absence of being connected to nature, people are trying desperately to connect to something over the internet. But it's in the say it's it's calorie deficient entertainment. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, we need to feel the the complete em environment. What we're getting over the internet and and in our digital age is very much a, a very narrow bandwidth of the whole experience. Um, I keep thinking at the moment of my friend who's a record producer that always says that vinyl is full calorie music which is why when you were a child and you bought an LP, that would keep you entertained for, for a month. Whereas you buy a CD and you're bored with it after you've played it three times because he said it doesn't have the same totality because of the recording methods as vinyl does. That's right. Plus, I mean, it's even different frequency because you don't hear the whole aspect, like the crackles in the background, and you don't actually have to do anything with a CD other than push a button, where with the vinyl, you lift the needle across or you have that almost fulfillment of watching everything play at the same time as listening to it, the whole experience. So, yeah, we're we're getting completely disjointed. We don't have the full package anymore, are we? We're tending to... If, if we're tending to also push too far ahead of ourselves um, and we're not, as they say, sit back and smell the coffee kind of thing, um, or not coffee because it's full of caffeine, <laughs> <laughs> um, because more often than not now, when somebody tells you something interesting, the first thing people are doing is Googling it and Googling what more and more and more before they've even assimilated what's going on now so nothing actually stays nothing there's no growth in people the same way so we're getting we're i've always liked the expression we're because we're the only animal that's so clever we're making ourselves sick uh, ourselves sick yeah that's it's so true i know everybody runs off to google it and and we've lost the the uh, the God given right to think about something, critically think it, and trust our gut, which mm. we have all the answers 
if we would trust ourselves and stop believing that we shouldn't trust ourselves. Well, it's, it's interesting that you're saying trust your guts. Um, in the sort of the early days of osteopathy back in the 1800s, there was so much emphasis put on the enteric nervous system, which is basically the nervous system that runs your belly. I mean, it's got about a third of the neurons that go on in your brain. If all it does is shove your dinner through, it would need one. You know, it's got this mass of neurons. It is just this entire processing center. It's your primitive brain. And all we do is shovel junk at it. So we're losing that connection to nature because partly through our nutrition, partly through our electric lighting and our central heating, we don't have any markers in time. We're kind of getting lost in time because our body our bodies are, are just so randomly all over the place rather than it's cold, it's dark, I'm eating potatoes, it's winter. <laughs> it's hot, it's sunny, I'm eating lettuce, it's summer. That sounds like this house to a degree. <laughs> <laughs> well, Heather, that's wonderful. We could go on all day as we usually do. Um, but I'm going to have to start to wrap us up here. But I think what we our takeaway is from that is that not everything is as it seems. A lot of the stuff that we can't see is affecting us more than the, the stuff that we can see. And whether that's um, generated synthetically or, or whether that's emotional. So the, certainly, hopefully, we've given our listeners and watchers a few things to think about as opposed to just going off and Googling them. And uh, I think we'll we'll have to put our heads together here after we, we stop recording and get some information on some of those little bands and mojos and things so that I, I can add the links to the the, uh, the script here and to the podcast so that people can actually go and look, Google those ones, Google the important things or the useful things. Um, but in the meantime, we encourage you all to keep watching, keep sharing, keep enjoying our videos um helping me to thank as well heather for joining us again and uh, telling you all to get back to nature get your feet on the ground go if you're close to an ocean take your shoes and socks off and stick those toes in the sand and just enjoy helping your connection back to mother earth again and uh, to the things that actually make our circadian rhythms and everything else tick so in the meantime thanks again heather um uh, it's been a pleasure to have you i know you have a busy life to get back to and uh so do you thank you all for joining us again on quantumly yours i'm your host again wendy patrick saying stay possum all information products and topics discussed in the show are simply the host and guests personal opinions and are for informational purposes only non-claim to offer a diagnosis treatment or cure all listeners and viewers are encouraged to do their own research and consult with their own healthcare providers before changing or adapting any new protocols. Finesium Holistic Health, nor any of its entities, assume any responsibility or liability for any consequence relating directly or indirectly from the information contained within the podcast.